This uh, firewood here is stuff that I just cut earlier this year. So it's going on this side of the shed, the woodshed. Callie, can you not breathe so heavy? Come here. It's very hard for people to hear when you're panting in the camera. This side, that's south. Well, basically like that. So this side of the, the uh, woodshed gets the most sun coming in and hitting it, especially the ones that are right on the outside, so the most winter sun can get into them and the, the back is open so that wind can come through from the west so the green so basically unseasoned firewood I put on this side seasoned on this side I still have a whole what bush cord and a half maybe down there I've got a probably a face cord down here that I cut down last fall actually and then all that ash over here I've that to cut um, into firewood and lumber so that's probably going to be good by well not for this year but for next year for sure Easy dog. Um, and I've got a bunch of de um, dead standing trees and trees that are down that are not rotted because they're elevated a little bit I need to still collect all of those as well so I've got a two years worth of firewood anyway
This uh, head's getting loose, but you can actually see why, because it's shrinking. See how the wood in there has a gap around it? It's because that wood is drying out and shrinking. I can kind of see some hairline cracks in here. So I'm gonna soak this thing in oil for a couple days, get that head to expand, that wood to expand again, and treat this handle. Really just getting into the firewood splitting season as it gets colder. I like to do most of my firewood prep in the winter, not not when it's hot and not when the wood is is uh, green and unfrozen. It splits apart a lot better when it's frozen. So soak that, I won't miss it for a couple of days. I use the other axe to make up some cooking uh, wood. It's one thing that I need a lot of all the time is I need to keep splitting my decent sized pieces of firewood into smaller chunks, smaller than that, so that I don't have to burn much. So it burns faster and hotter, gets that um, earthen oven up to speed or up to temperature, and then once the cob is uh, heated up, I can let the fire go out and it'll stay warm. But it, it just doesn't get to that hot temperature unless I'm using small wood with a lot of surface area so that it can burn fast and hot. Like if I put something bigger in there, especially if it has some water in it, like if it's not fully dried, seasoned, then it actually cr creates a cool fire in, in the oven and the, the mass of the oven, oven never really heats up. So I guess that I think I'll do that. I'll soak this head and then I'll split up a bunch of wood and then um, got a little bit more work to do on the sun I think before dinner but I got to keep an eye on those beans in the oven too. sugar garlic powder and hot sauce Planted the vegetable garden way too late this year because I didn't have a garden. I had to clear the land there first. So I don't have much in there, but I have been getting a few tomatoes, which I've finished eating. There's some green tomatoes, some green tomatillos. Um, 
I think there's a couple of zucchini, so I'm gonna go grab those and I'll throw that in the beans as well. And there's some uh, hot peppers, but they're still green. I'll use uh, at least one, maybe two in the beans anyway. So essentially all it is is beans, tomatoes, garlic powder, onions, and hot peppers. And then I'm gonna throw the zucchini in there as well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And oh, some old bay seasoning, so salt and paprika.